wine, okay? Talking about that Quincy Jones wine, an 85 year old came out the gate swinging, throwing wine bottles, throwing, boom, bang, boom, telling everybody business, and I was here for it, and so were y'all. Quincy Jones did an interview with Vulture, the magazine, and he was asked so many questions regarding his experiences in the music industry and his relationships to some of the biggest stars that we've grown up listening to and watching, okay? Like Marlon Brando, Richard Pryor, Michael Jackson, Donald Trump, hell, the Clintons. He spilled everybody's wine in this interview as if the interview was gonna be his damn last. Now, when I read the interview, and it was quite a long interview to read, I actually read every single one of the questions that the reporter Porter from Vulture asked Quincy Jones. I can't say that I'm shocked or surprised given who Quincy Jones is because he's a Pisces just like myself. And you know I love that astrology shit. And so him being a Pisces himself and being interviewed by a Pisces, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't supposed to be said in that interview. And it's the whole reason why he just issued this statement. Now, let me let me touch on a few things, okay? Now, what he said about Marlon Brando sleeping with anybody, okay? He said that he would screw a male body if he could. Which, given Marlon Brando's past and all his wives and circulating relationships, what Quincy Jones said, in my opinion, was the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God, okay? And then when Quincy Jones actually went a little further to say that Marlon Brando had slept with both Marvin Gaye and Richard Pryor, hell, I almost broke my damn wine glass and I don't break too many of them now, shit. Now I said that all the while my mama and my grandma and my great grandma was listening to this. Let's get it on. He was actually talking about a man. Damn, 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 damn. Luke DeVandros did that shit too, and so did Tevin Campbell. Can we talk for a minute? They know they wrong for that shit. You don't trick us like that and tease us. Hell, they are responsible for women actually watching gay porn. I'm talking about men on men. For somebody that asked me that question yesterday. Yes, it's for those entertainers who actually like one thing, but they're singing to another for a check. But no, he got a whole other arterial motive, and then you find yourself on poor her watching two men screw because he done sung it into you spiritually all these years. Now, there's your damn answer. <laughs> <laughs> now, what he said about Marlon Brando sleeping with Richard Pryor, I don't know how true that is, but I do know that Richard Pryor, just like every other comedian, would always tell his own business in his comedy shows the same way Bill Cosby told us that he put Spanish fly in these females drink to sedate them and have sex with them, okay? Spanish fly was the thing that all boys uh, at, from age 11 on up to death, <laughs> we will still be searching for Spanish fly. Right. And 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 what was the old the old story was if you took put a little in. drop, no, it was on the head of a pin. pin. That's right. Drop and you it put in it a in a Coca Cola. Drink. Don't matter. It doesn't make it. And the girl would drink it. And, and she's yours. Hello, America. <laughs> have been doing that shit for years and so when Richard Pryor came out and said this here tell him about my rap stuff <laughs> next time next time next time uh, Paul was with me once when I first fucked my first faggot <laughs> and he's been holding that over my head for two years I fucked a faggot I just want to say it now so nobody else can tell <laughs> I, I liked it. I would have married him, but he had to go away and get an operation. <laughs> you better take him for his damn word all day. I don't care what his kids say. Kids don't know everything that the parents do. And during those times, I'm pretty sure those parents, like Richard Pryor and Marlon Brando, didn't want their kids finding out about their liberating, freely sexual lifestyle. And y'all got to remember, in most cases, artists of this caliber, in order to reach the masses like they've had, they have to be able to relate to every single person on a spiritual level, on a sexual level, on a loving level, on a comedic level, hell, even on a hatred level, okay? You gotta be able to relate to every single body in any given moment, in any city, you gotta be ready to perform. And so most of the time, now I'm not saying this about all liberated people, all free people, cause you know they call themselves free when they have no boundaries when it comes to sex and when it comes to love. Now this is not, I'm not not putting everybody in the same box. I'm just saying artists of this caliber, okay? In order for them to be able to communicate, pastors are in this category as well, okay? In order for them to 
be able to reach you and to connect with you, they gotta be able to connect with you on all levels. And so in most cases, they end up sleeping with people not based on their race, color, sex, whether it's male or female, simply because they connect with people, okay? And they've allowed themselves to connect with people so that they can be able to relate to people and relate it back to us so that we'll be able to understand everything, okay? And laugh about it. Now, the biggest part of this interview that I wanna talk about is what he said about Michael Jackson because he pissed a lot of people off, including Joe Jackson. And Joe Jackson is not the one you wanna screw with when it comes to his family and his legacy. And everybody's ass that he beat, including Michael's, okay? and called him everything in the book because he told him that the world was gonna say the same shit and that he needed to develop thick skin in order to make it in society. So if you can make it through me, you're gonna be able to make it in the world. And voila, what we got? Michael Jackson, one of the greatest entertainers alive. Now, what Quincy Jones has said, I gotta tell you, it's true, okay? Yes, Michael, and this is no different from any other entertainer, okay? They all take each other's songs. They all wanna take 100% credit because in the world's eyes, it makes them that much more powerful as an artist, okay? When you see that that artist is everything behind him, it makes you love him and connect with him even more because you look at him as a genius. But Quincy Jones told the truth, okay? Whether y'all liked it or not, and it came at a bad time, given that Michael Jackson is not here anymore. But hey, this is what we call history, okay? In order for history to be written, somebody that lived with them or was close to them must come and tell what they weren't going to tell throughout their life. And so, Quincy Jones was doing the right thing by telling us exactly how Michael Jackson really got down. Now, he said something else that really hit home to me, okay? Because I have a lot of family members that are struggling from the same thing that Michael Jackson actually passed from, okay? Rest his soul. He said that Michael Jackson, of course we all know, claimed that he had a skin disease. Quincy Jones being the Pisces that he is, said, Michael, that's bullshit. Ain't no damn way you got a skin disease. You just mad because your daddy called you ugly and you hate your skin color, so you want to be a neutral color or a white color just so you could appeal to everybody, which Michael Jackson probably wouldn't have been able to do that had he would have remained dark skinned. Let's just keep it 100. Now, he said the only problem, listen to me, that Michael Jackson had was not with his looks and with his insecurities and with his low self-esteem. It had had everything to do with profofall, okay? If I even said that shit right. With pain medication. That is the biggest epidemic here in the world. And so, I'm gonna tell you how I know that Quincy Jones wasn't lying about Michael Jackson's pain med addiction. Because when you have as many plastic surgeries that Quincy Jones actually came out and confirmed that Michael Jackson stayed at the plastic surgeon's office getting botched up and shit, him and Black China must have had the same damn doc. But nevertheless, when you are constantly going under anesthesia to receive cosmetic surgery, and this is really big now today. Everybody's going in for some type of cosmetic surgery and has to receive some type of anesthesia. And the anesthesia is most likely profofol. If I'm even saying the shit right. You get the point. Mm-hmm. Those surgeries, okay, most likely will cause you to become addicted to pain meds. And this is how Michael honestly got addicted to the pain meds. And so when Quincy Jones came with that information and said, there was nothing wrong with Michael Jackson's skin. He didn't have no damn skin disease. His problem was cosmetic surgery and his love for profile that he received under anesthesia when he went to see a plastic surgeon. And so after so many surgeries and them administering Fitnah, Profofol, Oxycontin, you name it. This is what tends to happen. Hell, I was just in surgery, what, less than a month ago, and they was giving me fentanyl. I went from talking like this, okay? I was up and alert to... <sighs> I said, let me tell you something. You can keep your damn drug and bring me Tylenol because y'all not finna make me leave here a crackhead, okay? We lost Prince to the same thing. And so this shit is real common. And so I understand why Quincy Jones was forced to issue a statement because he came out and said that his family staged a family intervention with his old stubborn ass, you know, 85 year old people, especially if they've lived long, big lives are typically stubborn as hell. They cuss not every nurse, they the ones in the retirement home or at their houses because in most cases they got money, cuss not everybody in the house because they won't let them make up their own mind and stuff. You know how they are, they wanna do what in the hell they wanna do without having to explain themselves to nobody. And so Quincy Jones' family knew that this is how we had to get him to understand 
understand that what he did to Michael Jackson's legacy and Marlon Brando and Richard Pryde, Marvin Gaye and anybody else, the Beatles, he has to understand the damage he's actually doing to their legacy. So you need to believe what in the hell Quincy Jones is saying. He was there. He knows whether he claims that he was an alcoholic or not. Now I do want to say this for the record, okay? Because I do believe with everything in me that he did lie about something, okay? I think that Quincy Jones lied about his relationship with Ivanka Trump and the 22 women that he's dating supposedly all over the world, okay? He claimed he fly me in every week and he got 22 girlfriends and they all know about each other. Now, if you 85 years old and you claim to have dated Ivanka Trump, I don't care what anybody say. I cannot see Ivanka Trump pouncing on this old man at all because I personally don't believe giving Quincy Jones weight and size and the way he slouched over that he can even get it up. And I know he ain't using no damn Viagra because he wouldn't even live this long. But I just cannot see that 22 women, young women, would actually be pouncing on him because he ain't got that kind of energy or stamina to screw every single one of them, okay? Ivanka Trump was probably getting close to him for some connections to who he was and who he knew. Ain't no telling. She probably was trying to get him to sign over his whole damn estate and everything that he earned over to the Trump family. And she was gonna use those long, beautiful white legs to do it. But I guess when she couldn't get that to happen, she carried her ass on. Now, as far as him dating 22 women that are living all over the world and they flying in every week, he ain't doing nothing. And I guarantee you nothing but kissing and rubbing on them. He doing the same thing these old men do to the nurses in the retirement center. The nurses is trying to make up their bed, trying to get them dressed. And while the nurses is getting the old man dressed, he, he cuffing the whole ass, okay? He just rubbing the whole ass, grabbing the titty, and she say stop. So if, if I was one of them 22 year old women that was under the age of 40, hell, I would come and let him rub and squeeze too for a check and then I'll take my ass back on to the house because I ain't got to do nothing more than that. Now I'm gonna put that on record. Call me a chick, hoe, or anything you wanna say. But hey, if I was 22 years old and all he could do is rub and kiss, damn it, we gonna kiss and rub. Just like my daughter caught me and her daddy doing when she was sick. She was standing at the door and I'm just riding and I'm just riding the hell out of my husband. And she said, uh huh, she was standing at the door watching for about five minutes, okay, at six years old. She said, I see you guys kissing and rubbing, my ass just fell to the side. Just fell. And needless to say, my husband had a conversation with her that night about what that was and she ain't brought it up since. Now, and so yes, after all of that, I can understand truly why Quincy Jones, why Quincy Jones family had to pull him aside to say, hey, you gonna have to issue an apology because you don't cross the line, okay? I understand that you were Pisces and you gonna stay true to your word. And if you read the apology that he issued is too long and I know he didn't write it, his family actually wrote it and it didn't sound like anything that he would say. And so I'm not gonna go in and read all that, but I will say this, that he is truly a Pisces because he apologized for what he said, but he stands by what he said because it's damn true. And I'm here for it, bitch. Now I gotta go. <laughs> Woo! Now, mm-hmm. Before I go, before I introduce what I'm drinking, most of y'all already know what I'm drinking and stuff. Y'all asked me, of course I was gonna get my own shirt, okay? I got my own shirt. Look, 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 y'all. Uh, I ain't gonna show like my tights because I got a little, I got a little camel toe going on. But these are the new unwind shirts, okay? These are only gonna be available until March 16th on this channel. This is just a regular t-shirt. I'm gonna be using this one to work out in. It's very thin, it's light, it's refreshing. I'm actually sweating right here under these damn lights. And so if y'all haven't ordered your unwind with Tasha K shirts that say now I gotta go, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better do so now because we're not going to be offering the same shirts on this channel, okay? So they're only going to be available till March 16th at teespring.com forward slash unwind with Tasha K. For those of y'all that are saying you could not find the link, the link is always in the description box below the video, okay? Right below the video, there's a description box. It's going to say the link, boom, and it's going to take you right there, all right? So go ahead and get these shirts now before they run out because like I said, we're going to 
gonna roll out a whole different shirt for us wine sippers. Now, also before I get into what I'm drinking, I'm affiliated with a company, okay? That's gonna help you to develop your wine palette. This is very, very important, okay? For those of y'all that kinda wanna get an idea on what you like and what you don't like, and for $9.95, I'm affiliated with the tasting room, okay? I have a link that I, I want you guys to use so that you can get it through me. It will also be in the description box below the t-shirt, okay? And in the comments, all right? And if you still can't find it, just send me an email Unwind with Tasha K at gmail.com and I'll send it to you, okay? These are six tastes of wine for $9.95. Now, I'm gonna leave the link below and what you're gonna do is they're gonna send you, once you go to this website using the link that I'm gonna provide for you, it's gonna ask you questions about what you like and then it's going to curate a selection of wine and this is the selection that it curated for me, okay? Because they have thousands and thousands of bottles of wine. They're gonna put together a taste palette for you and as you can see most of my wine is red because I prefer red wine and so the system was really good about picking up the flavors that I like and I'm gonna be trying these and once I'm done trying these they have instructions on the box here you'll be able to figure out your wine profile all for $9.95 okay look I got six tastes of wine and I'm gonna be opening these probably on the channel okay and so the link is gonna be below the description box for those of y'all that want to taste all this damn wine for ten dollars and figure out which wines that you actually like because I hear from a lot of you guys that I only like sweet wine well how do you know that I've introduced you guys to so much wine on the channel that you probably wouldn't have tried before all because of the way that I'm describing it to you and so a lot of you guys think that you only like sweet wine or you may only like dry wine but this here will help you to see that hey there are other varietals of wine that I may like and that I may want to try and this is an easy way to do it and like I I said I will leave the link below to the taste, okay? Now, before I go, I am drinking. And I gotta tell you guys, I got another surprise for y'all too. Woo, it's hot. Who I need my Jessica Kahainor fan. I am drinking in this video the Yellowtail Sweet Red Wine, okay? And guess what, guys? I am affiliated. And you guys can buy this wine through me, okay? I'm affiliated with wine.com. I will leave a link below, below this video, below the t-shirts, below the wine taste for $9.95. I will leave a link below directly to a site where you can order this wine through me and try it for yourself, okay? And this is a sweet red wine for those of y'all that have been asking me for a red wine that's sweet, but not too sweet, but it'll kinda help you to mature your taste, to get you on the path to drinking red wines, okay? And this one's perfect. Like I said, this wine is vegan. It's not too sweet, it's not syrupy. I don't like those syrupy wines. Those are mostly dessert wines, okay? We've talked about that on this channel, the Moscato. And when you drink this wine, honestly, you get fresh sweet berries with vanilla and chocolate. And this wine honestly complements barbecue and things of that sort, okay? And this wine, honestly, you can get for $6 and it's vegan, okay? Mm-hmm. And of course, I will leave a private link below so that you can click the site and order this wine through me, okay? We moving up on this channel, y'all, hell yeah. Thank you all so much for watching my crazy ass, okay? If you like this video, subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, at Unwind with Tasha K. And hell, if you didn't like this video, you can still subscribe anyway, just so you can cuss my ass out. Not that I'ma really give a damn anyway. Now I gotta go, bye.